Hello and welcome to High Vibe Astrology. This is Jennifer. Thank you for joining me for this video on the Venus retrograde energy that just began around 9.30 p.m. Eastern on July 22nd and stations direct on September 4th. This chart that I'll be talking about holds energies that will be in effect for approximately six weeks. And since I'm reading this as an event chart drawn up for my part of the world, I am going to incorporate the angles this time and their rulers to provide some insights around this as an event chart. And I realize it would look differently and read differently for those in another part of the world, so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Since Venus is the focus of this chart, we have to look at the aspects impacting this planet and what those energies could mean, especially within the context of the recent nodal shift into Aries and Libra, which occurred on July 17th, right after the Cancer New Moon. I would encourage those of you who haven't listened to those videos to do so. Um, they can be found on my channel, obviously. I will include the links in the window box below this video. But these videos do provide more of a context with regard to this Venus retrograde. And the biggest reason is because Venus is now the ruler of the Libra South Node. So the fact that we have Venus going retrograde, retrograde is retrospect, reflection, and of course the South Node is also bringing up past patterns. So it is the past patterns that we have to deal with. But I feel, and this is what I addressed in the other videos, that we are leveling up. We are, as we evolve in the collective, we're not returning to the same point ever. That spiral goes up and out. So I just feel that we are graduating completely from the old ways of being in relationship. And this Venus retrograde is providing an opportunity for us to really give ourselves permission to state what it is our heart truly wants and to have the courage, North Node and Aries, to move forward with what we want and to state to the universe that we are worthy of this. Whether we're talking about the entire collective or our own individual lives, no one is going to stand up for us if we do not stand up for ourselves. And this is what the North Node in Aries energy is all about. So the South Node in Libra, ruled by Venus, now retrograde, is an invitation to reflect upon the past, to really get clear on what worked and what did not work, and to state clearly what it is you want and use your words, your language, your thoughts, your beliefs, your faith to match that vibration and watch the universe create miracles for you. It's not about telling the universe how to accomplish this. Our job is to identify the what, not the how. And that brings me to the very first aspect, which is a yod from Neptune and Pluto to Venus. Yods signify fate and destiny are at work. With a combination of Neptune and Pluto focusing energy on Venus, it's analogous to having two major arcana cards in a tarot reading. It's like fate and destiny definitely play a role in what unfolds during this time. Pluto requires of us to withdraw projections and triggers from our traumatized past and to learn the right use of power. More importantly, it's about knowing that love is the only power that trumps everything else, even that past trauma. So reminding ourselves to think in terms of divine love being greater than any previous um, experience, Divine love is greater than the emptiness inside or the trauma I'm leaving behind or whatever the case may be. Just fill in the blank for whatever applies to you in your own life right now. 
Divine love is greater than fill in the blank. Neptune teaches us to trust the universe when we can't see beyond our nose. Things are too foggy, too uncertain, just too mystifying for us to figure out. But having faith and trust does not mean giving up on our dreams. It simply means that we have to stay out of the way of what the universe is orchestrating. And um, we have to stop trying to control events or people. Our job is to focus on the what, which is Neptune's way of encouraging us to imagine, to visualize what it is we truly want. But remember that spirit's job is to accomplish the how. Anytime we try to figure out how something could work, we sabotage it because we are ultimately limiting what the universe can do. And the universe always has a much better plan, a much more miraculous plan than we could ever imagine for ourselves. The next aspect is Mercury and Venus conjunct. And this, I feel, is a union of head with heart. It's a willingness also to use Mercury's communication skills so that we can give voice to what it is we truly want, truly desire for ourselves in the way of resources and relationships, beauty, harmony, creativity, and to speak that truth as we move forward. Whether you speak to others really doesn't matter, but making it your prayer, your mantra, your daily devotion is what is most important insofar as matching your vibration with what you truly want. Then we have Venus and Saturn opposite each other. Both planets are retrograde, which is creating an energy that asks us to focus within. Retrogrades are a time for reflection, reassessment, and retrospect. Yes, it could mean that people from the past come back, but only if there's unfinished business that can only be resolved by such an encounter. If you are solid in what you want and focus upon that with unwavering faith, there is no need to repeat the past unless something about it is bringing healing to you. Saturn is about mastery and Venus is about self-worth. So we do need to master self-worth and self-esteem because that is how we will attract the resources and people we love. So if you're doubting your own worthiness, then the universe may send someone to you who reflects the old patterns of self-doubt and criticism until you decide that you've had enough of that pattern and move on. There is also a square from Venus to Sedna. And this square, I feel, is about reminding us of those times we have abandoned ourselves for the sake of the tribe, for the sake of family tradition, community. And in Sedna's case, it was literally giving in to an arranged marriage, only to discover what a nightmare it turned out to be and eventually leading her to complete transition after she surrendered to the shamanic death. But this is a time to break free of previous traditions that simply do not heal and nourish what the heart truly desires. Both Venus and Sedna have to do with abundance and prosperity as well. So tuning into nature automatically dissolves any feelings of lack or want the feelings of not being enough, not having enough, because nature is infinitely generous in its replenishment and regenerative qualities. So there is no lack in nature whatsoever. With Venus trining the North Node, this is profound support from the universe for us to have the courage to move forward in our lives. And even if the Venus retrograde has us revisiting the past in some sort of way, it's only to gain a higher perspective and greater self-esteem. I love that in this particular chart, the North Node sits in the second house, which is Venus's natural domain. And it is about self-worth, self-sufficiency. 
that we are enough. We have enough within our own capacity. And we don't really, we don't need to measure our self-worth through another's lens. This is about our own independence, North Node in Aries, and, um, and just simply recognizing that we are worthy of those things we want to call in and celebrate. Leo is all about celebration, uh, staying in the moment, and the innocent, playful child who's able to be spontaneous and uninhibited in expression, not worrying about what other people think. And Aries is the go-getter and just able to forge ahead to find a new pathway and to be entrepreneurial in that respect as well. Now, Next, I want to talk about the Cardinal Grand Cross involving the Sun, Pluto, and the Nodes, all at 29 degrees. 29 is a critical degree because it's the final stage of the sign that it occupies. After 29, the planet moves into zero degrees of the next sign. And of course, I have to clarify here that the Nodes move backwards. So when the Nodes are at 29 degrees, they're actually beginning their journey through the signs they occupy whereas planets are moving in the opposite direction from 0 to 29. After 29, the planet moves into 0 degrees of the next sign. So both the ending and the beginning of any sign represents the culmination of that sign's expression. Cardinal energy initiates and catalyzes something new. So this cardinal cross, this cardinal grand cross, at the critical degree is really pushing us to initiate something brand new, to finish up any unfinished business and make way for the new, much like a new moon energy. So let's have a look at the sun and Pluto opposition. First of all, anytime we have the sun making a T-square to the nodes, it is describing an energy or a pattern where we've literally allowed our lives to revolve around something or someone else instead of putting ourselves at the center of our own lives. Pluto opposite the sun is intensifying the realization of this fact by bringing to us any outer events or people that will further illuminate this pattern. Power struggles, um, someone who wants to have power and control over us, But this is all for the purpose of us choosing more wisely and, you know, literally making different choices for ourselves at this time. I think it's also important to understand Pluto's high vibe energy. It often gets a really bad rap because it takes us so far into the underground and so far into shadow work that we often forget the vein of gold that it is really cultivating in our lives. And when we are willing to look at our own shadow and to retract any projection of our shadow onto the outside world or other people, then we can really use that laser-like focus and persistence, perseverance, these are all Pluto words, um, and passion, Pluto teaches us right use of power, but that power (laughs) really only comes about um, when we are brave enough to look at our own shadow and to persevere and persist in, you know, never giving up, just keep on cultivating. And even though Pluto may take you through hell, may take you through a lot of literal crap, you will find that vein of gold. It is the alchemist. So ultimately, um, you know, we have to get through a lot of lower vibe energy before we can find the high vibe. And that high vibe is after persistence and perseverance. We find what makes us passionate and there is power in that. And it's also understanding that The manner that Pluto is asking us to co-create with Source is by surrendering the ego's will in favor of divine will, which ultimately brings us that vein of gold that we could never find on our own. 
And I feel that with this opposition from Pluto and the sun, uh, that is what the sun is illuminating. And that is the promise. Now, sun in Cancer, uh, first of all, the sun rules Leo. And Venus in Leo is the star of this particular chart. But sun in Cancer is asking us to reflect upon the past, reflect upon ancestral patterns that need to go, that have served their purpose. They have reached that climactic point, the 29 degree point, and the sun is getting ready to move into Leo, where it's going to be shining its light on Venus and Mercury and giving us a lot more to look forward to and to celebrate. But one of the things that the sun in Cancer has to overcome in terms of the challenge is emotional bonding that has somehow turned into bondage. So all water signs have difficulty detaching from heartbreak or relationships because water bonds immediately. It's hard to separate two, two drops of water. It merges instantly into one body. So water signs do have more difficulty separating themselves when separation or a breakup occurs. But it can also just be with family members. I mean, cancer represents the family tribe, the family clan. And it's often difficult to break away from those tribal traditions. And that's what that Venus square Sedna is bringing up tension around and asking us to resolve. And then, of course, this grand cross with the sun, Pluto, and the nodes. So everything is really coming to that breaking point. And we have to identify what is worth taking into our future and what needs to go. Where the nodes are concerned, I've already addressed this in my previous video on the nodes shifting into Aries and Libra. But it is actually very similar to what I just described. Aries North Node is asking us to make ourselves and our own passion projects the priority in our lives. It's about leading by example and walking our talk and being able to give from a place of inspiration rather than depletion. It reminds me of the quote, give a person a fish and they eat for one day. Teach a person to fish and they're able to eat for life. But this whole cycle of the Venus retrograde is about reclaiming the power of love that can only come from our own connection to the source of all life, love, and abundance. Now, the reason I wanted to discuss the angles and their rulers is because we have Aquarius rising and Leo on the descendant or the seventh house cusp with Venus and Mercury in the sign of Leo, obviously. Aquarius is about freedom and individuality, while Leo is focused on romance, appreciation, and play, and also devotion. This is really interesting because, in my view, the nature of love is about granting freedom. It's not about possession. True love grants freedom to self and to others to find their own way, to make their own mistakes, and to stop trying to control or protect others. We have no control over anything or anyone else. And when we try to take control over anything or anyone outside of us, especially anyone, then we're robbing them of the opportunity to find their own way and to make their own connection to what the universe is teaching them. We also have no control over the motion of the planets or how and when they activate certain areas of our lives. What we do have control over is how we respond to these energies and events and make the most of this invitation from the universe to invite more love and abundance into our own lives and consequently have more of it to expand and radiate out into the world around us. And this is reflective of the Leo energy, which radiates generosity to those around it and shines it out into the universe. 
But love, which is Leo, and freedom, which is Aquarius, are flip sides of the same coin. They share the same axis of energy. So realizing this and practicing self-love means that we are absorbing everything the universe can give us. And from that infinite wellspring of love, life, and all things that generate abundance, that generate events that make life worth living, that give us cause for celebration, then that is what we are also making available to others in our microcosmic universe. I also like the fact that Mercury is conjunct Venus and in this chart rules both the fourth and fifth houses. So as I said, Mercury conjunct Venus is the union of head and heart and the fourth and fifth houses refer to our emotional security, home, foundation, family, and the creative passion projects that result from that secure foundation. We also have Sagittarius ruling the 10th and 11th houses, and this is this has to do with our home in the world, our place in community, and any groups or social networks that are the result of that interaction. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius and occupies the sign of Taurus. And, you know, by design or coincidence, we also have Uranus, the chart ruler, because it rules Aquarius. Aquarius is rising. Uranus is also in the sign of Taurus. And Venus is the planet that rules Taurus. So these, all of these placements bring us right back to the star of the show, Venus in Leo. And I just think it is amazing how all of these dots connect to bring us back to the same place, our own worthiness. And the universe with the North Node in Aries now is asking us to define for ourselves our own pathway forward and not to give up on relationships, but to make self and self-worth the priority so that that is what we bring to any relationship we enter and that is what radiates out and makes available to the other people in our world with whom we interact. So in tying all of this together I would say that this is about getting into the flow of effortless mastery putting the ego's desire to control on the altar of the infinite source and allowing there to be an alignment of self-love with divine love and that being the place from which we interact with others so that there is inspiration in the giving so that we're holding a vibration of abundance and being in the moment and being present with source, it isn't something we have to consciously do even. When we practice this within ourselves on a daily basis, we hold that vibration and wherever we go, we are exuding and radiating that vibration, naturally making it available to others. They can pick up on it and, you know, take the ball and run with it, but we can't run for them. We can't do the work for them. And we're not doing them any favors when we try to do the work for them. Love is about granting freedom. And that freedom means that people have to find their own way and make their own way along the path they've chosen until they choose differently or not. But it isn't up to us. So I hope that you have found this helpful. I am going to leave you with the frequencies. However, this time, because this turned out to be a bit of a longer video, I am not including affirmations. And I also feel that this is in alignment with with the theme that I've just been talking about. So I leave you with the invitation to create your own affirmations. And what I've shared with you today is simply my own insights from my own experience and interaction with source and devotion on a daily basis. But you uh, have the freedom to use that Mercury conjunct Venus and find your own voice, create your own affirmations, and 
you know, drop into your heart and feel what it is you want your next steps to be, what you want your life to look like, what you want your world to look like, to use Neptune's imagination and Pluto's vein of gold and begin to cultivate that for yourself. Create affirmations that go along with these frequencies. And um, so leave a comment for me. Let me know how this message resonates with you. And I look forward to being with you at the Aquarius full moon on August 1st. I'll see you next time. Wishing you well. This is Jennifer.